Hey guys, Zen here, and today I wanted to go over the five best attacking operators in Rainbow Six Siege. Now, of course, this is my opinion, and none of this is set in stone or fact. You guys can also look forward to more operator lists like this, so make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on. But this list is in order with number one being who I think is the best attacker currently in the game, so keep that in mind as we proceed. And so to start this list off at the number five spot, we have Floris. There's been an underhanded war for drones on attack between Floris and Twitch, and with all the change that's happened with the shock drone, I think Floris and his super unique gadget edge out the win. So Floris is a two speed, two armor operator that brings the RCE Rotero drone to the field. He gets a few of them and essentially they're drones that at the push of a button bunker down becoming invincible and explode just a few seconds after. And the effects can be devastating to the defensive team. Any gadget that's within the radius of the drone's explosion will get destroyed. And if played correctly, it's nearly unavoidable. Now in practice, the RCE Rotero isn't an Intel based drone by design, even if it does off for a camera feed. No matter what, it's always moving forward and it's on a timer before it actually bunkers all by itself and explodes where it stops. And that's the biggest draw of the gadget. It's really a remote controlled bomb. And if defense isn't quick enough to take it out, it could mean sacrificing an entire wall's worth of bandit batteries, Jaeger ADS, barbed wire, and even deployable shields. And once that bomb is armed, there is absolutely no stopping it. Now, another huge perk that's fairly understated is that Floris's drones can also reach gadgets high up like Gersmont Mines and Wamai's Magnets, because if you arm it just as you jump towards a wall, it sticks to the wall. And so there aren't too many gadgets that are truly exempt from being taken out. Even with his counters, both Mute and Mozzie can put the gadget out of use, but knowledgeable players can arm it just out of reach and still destroy both of their gadgets in one explosion as well. And then Floris is able to just follow it up with another Rotero and the cycle starts all over again. Now for a loadout, he brings the super underrated AR-33, which on Thatcher never got amazing press because he also has the LED5, which most players prefer. But by itself, it rips. And I've always personally preferred it over the LED5 for its manageable recoil and higher fire rate. For DMR users, he has access to the SR25, which gives him the ability to equip the longest zoom scope currently in the game. And he tops off with flash grenades to be more aggressive or a claymore to watch his back while he's on the drone. I think Floris is a powerhouse operator that's perfect for both team and solo play. And his ability to almost always disrupt the defensive side is unmatched. Moving on to the number four spot is a pick that's aged like fine wine, and that's Finca. Finca is a two-speed, two-armor operator with the Adrenal Surge gadget. It's a global ability, and over time, it's just gotten better and better, where now it's in, I think, the best state it's ever been. So global abilities have had somewhat of a troubled past in Siege. Should they be allowed? Do they just do too much all at once? But it's tricky when you consider giving health to attackers. On defense, you always have a home base. The objective is a place where if you're on a roam and you take some damage, you can always revert back to it and get a quick stim from Doc or Thunderbird. Attack doesn't have that luxury, and so the most sensible way to heal up hurt attackers is by sending their heart rate through the roof and returning some health points. And so once you trigger the Adrenal Surge, all of the attackers get a nice bump to their health, and even if they're fully healed, they'll be overhealed, no matter where they're located. And now, that health is permanent. It used to be you'd get a temporary boost, and it would gradually go away. And there was also a perk that reduced your recoil for all guns, which was meant to be a buff, but didn't always always work that way. And so both of those mechanics were scrapped and Finca has become the official healer on attack that gives actual health. Now, almost just as importantly, she can revive down teammates with a surge and even now has the ability to do it for herself. And so if you're down for any reason, Finca gets you back up in seconds, which can dramatically change the outcome of a round. For her loadout, she has the Spear 308 Assault Rifle, the Saz G Shotgun, and the 6P41 LMG. And my choice here is the LMG. It has an insanely large magazine with almost no recoil and packs a powerful punch with 46 damage. But I think when you combine Finca's health boost, the 6P41 LMG, and her frag grenades, Finca is a fragger at her core. She gets the number four spot because I like her damage output, her gadget is now consistent and essential, and she's incredibly simple to use. I think global abilities do have a place in Siege if they can solve problems that need an answer, and Finca with the Adrenal Surge does that for the attackers elegantly. The number three pick is Buck, and he gets this pick because of the time period we're in with Rainbow Six Siege. The game that was is now gone, and this new meta is about being as efficient as possible while having as much firepower as possible, because people are just better at the game now and really understand what it's all about. Buck is a two-speed, two-armor operator with the legendary Skeleton Key. It's an under-barrel shotgun with very high soft breaching capability, but with a skilled Buck player, you'll rarely see him on the same floor as you. Buck is best used on a floor above or below the defenders because he can add pressure by knocking out the 
floor and cleaning up kills or by picking off gadgets that he can spot through the holes he makes. This is a part of the meta that's become more common over time, and the operators that specialize in this have become much more popular, including his biggest rival, Sledge. But personally, my favorite part about this operator is that I believe Buck is the most versatile operator on attack. The Skeleton Key is a breaching tool first and foremost, but it's also extremely lethal when you're in a close quarter situation. And so it's like always having a backup plan when the AR runs dry and you don't have time to swap to the pistol. It also makes him incredibly fast. His ability to navigate the map by opening wall after wall or hatches and barricades means he's only a few seconds away from any part of the map and there's almost always an escape plan for him. Now, for a loadout, he packs the C8 assault rifle and this gun is a slayer. It takes time to learn and really master the recoil, but once you do, it just shreds any defender that comes close and they've allowed for the 1.5x scope, which I think is perfect for staying on target. He does also have access to a pretty solid DMR with the Cam RS and so he needs for nothing with firepower. It's a dominant loadout. The bow that ties it all together though is that Buck has access to the secondary hard breach charge, which means all things considered, he can get through just about any wall he comes up against. He can even be a one-man show and go above an electrified wall, buck out the ceiling and destroy the bandit batteries, then go back to the wall and open it up with the hard breach charge. Again, for me, it's the versatility here that gets him this high up on the list because if you want to be more aggressive and frag out, you can opt for flashbangs and get really pushy with him. The number three spot is about being foundational, a core operator that can be played each and every round and have some positive impact for the team and Buck excels here. At number two is Thermite. It's pretty simple. Place the charge and blow open the biggest possible hole in Siege. Thermite is a two-speed, two-armor operator with the exothermic charge. This is a day one essential operator that's never been irrelevant and probably never will be. Over the course of a few years, hard breaching has added some new operators and new rules. The biggest one being that some surfaces have health points and certain gadgets don't deplete all of those health points and so they won't open. This is why it takes Ace two Selma charges to fully open a hatch. Thermite ignores this entirely and guarantees that as long as nothing destroys the exothermic gadget itself, that wall or hatch is coming down. No matter the situation or the objective, Thermite can be added to any attacking team and make what could be the biggest impact during the round. The goal for defense is to keep the attackers out of the objective and that becomes exponentially more difficult when Thermite opens up the wall. As for a loadout, it's consistent. The 556 has incredibly high damage at 47 and is really easy to control with the added benefit of being able to equip the classic 2.5x ACOG. If you want to be adventurous, you can opt for the shotgun, but I think most players will find the AR a better tool here and his secondary gadgets are always rotating, but he currently has smokes and flashes. And so there's not too much to elaborate on. He has a consistent loadout with a hard hitting rifle. Anytime there's more smokes or flashes, it comes in handy and can help get a plant down and his hard breaching gadget is still I think the king of the crop and literally always essential. On the attacking side, when someone picks Thermite, you feel safe. You feel like the most important base is covered and the rest of the team can really work around that. Yes, there are other hard breaching options and even a secondary tool for it, but no one opens a bigger hole with more opportunity than Thermite. And I think for this list, it's important to have an essential pick that does an essential job that benefits the team every single round. Now, before we get to the number one spot, I wanted to go through the honorable mentions. I've got two options operators here for those that are looking for which operators to unlock next or to get more general information. The first honorable mention goes to Ace. This is an operator that would have been at the top of this list, but due to a few pretty dramatic nerfs, he's no longer the powerhouse he once was, but still definitely strong enough to get this spot. So Ace is a two-speed, two-armor operator with the Selma Aqua Breacher. This is another hard breacher on this list, but he's by far the most unique of the bunch. The Selma is a throwable canister that sticks to surfaces and then repels down and explodes leaving a hole in the wall. It used to do this three times, leaving a hole large enough to walk through, but it was turned down to just twice so that no matter what hole it makes, you'll always have to vault over it or crouch under it. It does go a little further though. You can also toss the gadget on a few other enemy defenses, like a deployable shield, and it'll take that down as well. Now, Ace gets three of these, and how he uses them is the most difficult choice he has to make. On a reinforced wall, if you want a thermite-sized hole, you'll have to deploy two Selma for an opening you can walk through. It also takes two Selma to blow open a single hatch and so technically ace can only open one hatch the entire round and then if you want to destroy defender utility you'll have to make that choice as well and so ace does have a lot of options but he also has to make the right call for the job because if he's the only hard breacher then the wall or hatch is essential now it is pretty easy for a defender to toss out an explosive and destroy ace's gadget after the first hole it opens because it takes more time to open the second hole and so sometimes you might just be left with a large murder hole 
hole instead of something the attackers can use to pass through. But a big draw for the operator is the fact that he has the AK-12 as his primary weapon. It hits hard, and there aren't too many primaries that can best it head to head, but because of its lethality, it did get a recoil adjustment. And he also maxes out with the 2.0 scope. If you've come to master this recoil, then this is one of the best weapons in the game, and when you pair it with essential hard breaching utility, it's a win-win. Ace is never a bad pick, and the gadget he has is useful, simple, and faster than most others that do a similar job. The second honorable mention is for Zero. He's a two-speed, two-armor attacker that's all about intel. He brings the Argus launcher to the field that fires cameras that embed into any surface, reinforced or not, and supply a live feed on either side of it. He's often called the Valkyrie for attack, and that's a pretty accurate description, but he does have one extra goodie here. The cameras he deploys fire an infinite range laser, and this can be a critical tool for knocking out defender utility. If there's an electric claw on a wall and other attackers are having trouble getting to it, Zero can position a cam to get a sight on it and take it out remotely. And if no one notices the camera, then you've got 24-7 complete surveillance on them. But most times, firing an Argus directly into sight will only get it destroyed because it's very easy to spot and makes a very recognizable sound when it's up. I'd say take an even bigger page out of Velg's book and deploy them throughout the map in places defenders like to get a flank or high traffic areas that could help the attackers. Now, his loadout is really exciting because arguably his SC-3000K is the best weapon currently on attack. It's like the old version of Zofia's M762 without the recoil. It hits hard, has a high fire rate, access to the 2.0 scope, and really simple vertical recoil. But if it just doesn't do it for you, then you can get a little snappier with Bandit's MP7, only this time with the higher zoom 1.5x on it. It's just one of the best SMGs in Rainbow Six Siege, and it might surprise you how effective it is on attack. He can also take up the Gon 6, which is great for removing defender utility, and he also has a secondary hard breach charge. Zero has basically every element you need to have a successful attacking round, and there's no part of him that's useless or lacking. The Argus launcher is amazing, both guns are good, both secondary weapons are good, and the secondary gadget options are really good as well. You really can't go wrong here, as long as you're disciplined with the gadget and can land a few bullets with his assault rifle, you'll find Zero, or better known as Splinter Cell's Sam Fisher, is a wonderful attacking operator. And last up, at the number one spot, the operator I feel is currently the best attacker in the game, is Maverick. And Maverick has no counters. You really can't stop a Maverick from doing what he does, and what he does is torch open holes and walls and hatches and pretty much anything else. And so Maverick is a three speed, one armor attacker with the blowtorch. This blowtorch, no matter what, will tear open holes in any wall or hatch and guarantee a sight line. With enough time, he can open up a hole big enough to vault over and could even get crafty enough to take the whole thing down. And again, the best part is there's nothing you can do about it. Maverick is his only counter because of course murder holes go both ways and so he could open it up and be met with a headshot instantly. That's a very real outcome. And honestly, I think Maverick is one of the most difficult operators to truly master because standing or crouching in the wrong spot will get you killed or make it difficult for your team to make their next move. And so I think Maverick requires lots of trial and error to get right. But once you do, he's literally unstoppable. Even Azami, whose job it is to seal up holes, can't control Maverick because when she throws up a Kiba barrier, it actually protects Maverick from those defender sites. And so he can continue to work on a wall and take down the barrier when he's ready. But for a loadout, Maverick comes equipped with the phenomenal M4 assault rifle. For me, it's a top five attacking weapon and one of the most consistent in the game. The AR-15 is also one of the better DMRs in the game. It's a fine choice and he wraps it up with frag grenades, which here pair very well with the gadget. Most new Maverick players will come up to an electrified wall, make a small hole and toss a frag grenade through to destroy the defender gadgets on the other side. And that is a strategy that works. There can be better ways to utilize his utility, but if the goal is to destroy the batteries or scare off the bandit, you will accomplish that. But with very skilled players, Maverick is like a scalpel, and he's able to make the sight lines he wants, always using just the right amount of blowtorch and never wasting any. He knows if Jaeger's ADSs are guarding the wall and doesn't sacrifice his frags, but calls out for teammates to deal with them so he can toss over a frag and support the thermite or ace. If he is the only hard breacher, then he might opt for a hatch and play it safe. And during all of this, he survives and never gets headshot shot it through his own holes. I've always compared Maverick to Mira because both gadgets can change the tide of a round and make it incredibly difficult for the opposite side to be successful, but in the wrong hands or in the wrong spot, they can both hurt their respective teams. Ultimately, Maverick is the best attacker in the game because he's unstoppable and no gadget ever introduced has been able to prevent Maverick from serving his purpose and that purpose is essential. Even paired with other hard breachers, he's really good because he can help deal with the wall or keep the 
defenders too nervous to approach it. His lethality is high as well, with an excellent assault rifle and frag grenades. And three speed is rare on attack, and you'll come to appreciate the quicker movement. Now, even I'm not as proficient as the best Maverick players are, but when he's on my team, I know that his utility can make a huge difference each and every round and create new lines of sight or full-on openings to pass through. Until there's a clear answer to his utility, he'll always be one of the best operators in the game and one of the only ones to guarantee his presence. And that's everything, guys. Those are my picks for the five best attacking operators in the game. Be sure to check out the best defenders as well as the worst operators list. Of course, every operator has their place, but what about you? Who are your five best attackers in Rainbow Six Siege? Leave it in a comment down below. Remember to get subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, I'm out.